I'm going to do an emotional uh, healing today because I think we're all in a space of where we need relaxation and we need um, understanding. And there are many points on, in the brain that helps us to formulate understanding. And one of them, um, which um, is, uh, it's only uh, lately that really we're beginning to understand, is the insula. There's two sections to the insular cortex. And that is where we um, connect internally and externally meaning we have a universe internally inside us, and then we're in a universe that's outside. So how do we connect an insular, uh, the cortex, really um, uh, uh, works on many bases in one, set, in one part of it, it works on like, you know, how do you know how you feel? So the insular, takes a lot of information from other parts of the body and brain and then tells you this is how you feel. So it's a, you know, the body uh, uh, has so many facets to it. And um, Tom, uh, Tam has really, uh, through his um, work, through his healing, has uh, simplified it so ordinary folk can um, do the healing and also understand it. So we'll begin. We always begin, and this is my doll, and that's my hammer. So, um, and you know, we, uh, Tom's been in trouble about three times since he started, 20, uh, he started this new healing for 25 uh, years ago. Um, he's, you know, been taken to court three times uh, but bec because he had cured uh, cancer of, a, of two governors and he had cured uh, some lawyers, they came to the rescue. So he didn't have to go to prison. And, it was, and you know, it was uh, the, um, the cases were dis dismissed. So it's important to have the right people in right places to be able to continue on. So I'm going to start, uh, we always begin by the neck, by uh, neck points. The reason is that this is, the neck is where we have an opening for the internal organs and for the, um, and for the brain. So we're able to manipulate, this is a system that works by the nervous system is based on the nervous system, not on the chemical system. So we use the, the, the doll and our own uh, mind entrainment uh, to uh, focus and to heal um, by um, brain entrainment. So I'm going to begin, let's see how this um, affects everybody. And then we can open up what this is. And um, for me, this is, um, a revolution in making in which we are going to, as there's more acceptance of um, other um, healing practices, this is going to be an important one. Okay. I'll sort of explain as I'm tapping why I'm tapping in certain places. There's uh, on the neck, there are for example, if I want to um, say there's not enough uh, oxygen in your body, then I will tap at a point where I can open up the phrenic nerve. The phrenic nerve um, is connected to the diaphragm because our lungs don't move. It is the diaphragm that moves up and down. And so when we... Um, App, we can open up the phrenic nerve. The other nerve that I'm going to open up is the vagus nerve. Vagus, um, vagus means wandering in Greek, I think. So the vagus nerve wanders in many parts of our body 
and also connects to many of our organs. So we want to be able to, my uh, mind and body, I think it's not just the uh, brain. It's the connection between the body and the mind because we hold our emotions in many places. For example, we hold our emotions in the kidneys, in the liver. So it's like we have uh, in the intestines, so in the stomach. And also we hold memories in these places. I'm going to the back of the neck. There are points that um, in the Western, the, um, the spinal cord is divided into different parts. So there's the C1 to C7, which is part of the cervical, the neck. And I'm going to C1 and C2. This is where you can reach the brain internally, these points. So as we want to relax the brain, I'm going to spend a little time on there. Then I'm going to go up to the occipital lobe, which is very close to C1, C2. And I'm going to tap on certain points there. Again, it's all about relaxation. And I'm going to talk a little less because I want you to get the actual enjoyment of this tapping. So if you listen, then we'll see how it has affected everybody. The limbic brain is part of our oldest brain, like the prefrontal cortex came much later. But the limbic is very deep, uh, nearly to the center of our brain, which holds um, our emotions, our emotions, and also uh, fright, flight, the autonomic system, meaning it isn't we decide ourselves consciously what's happening with our body. There is an unconscious side where the body runs itself in this universe or in its internal universe. And we have to, the tapping, what it does, tapping and also uh, brain to brain and the collective unconscious is that it brings it alive. Meaning the tapping and the concentration of the practitioner can affect those parts that we're trying to affect. So when I go to the limbic brain, I'm going to go, first of all, I'm going to go to the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is a very small section of our brain, but it has um, a lot of importance. It makes a lot of decisions and also it creates hormones. So when we say the pituitary gland, um, holds certain hormones. The hypothalamus is the one that makes eight different types of hormones. But we sometimes as you know, any machine or brain can come to such a state that it's not working well. That is where we come in. We unblock. This is all about unblocking um, part of the body which has, has some problem. So as we unblock the body, then the energy is able to go through and correct the body and also run on its natural, uh, in its natural form without any medicine. I think that is what's important. The body itself doesn't really need very much medicine. It just needs the unblocking. If we unblock it, it has its own functioning. It functions itself. It has its own medicines. It doesn't need medicine so much from the outside. But because we've built 
And I'm not saying that chemicals don't work, they have their own place. But what's happened in the medical system is that we don't use the nervous system. We don't use the nervous system for healing. We only use chemicals, we make pills, and also, of course, um, you know, um, operate. So I think, you know, um, if we start to look at what is the nervous system, nervous system is a system that relays information to all of our body. It can't, if your nervous system isn't working, you, you can't be working. So that's how important it is not only for the, the brain, but for the body itself. So what I'll explain is like, for example, if we look at the uh, spinal cord, each vertebra on each side of the vertebra, there's a nerve that runs through different parts of the body. Like for example, if you say you have a blood problem, we will go to the T1 because the T1 is uh, it, it's a blood um, point and also an arthritis point. So if anybody's got arthritis, say you've got arthritis in your um, um, you know hands, you begin from opening this point, and this point is also the part of the immune system. So when you have a blockage in the T1, T2, T3, then you will have um, certain you know, uh, respiratory problems and you will have um, uh, blood problems and you can have arthritis. So as we open that po those points, and there's different ways of opening these points. There's this, what I'm doing at this moment, but there's also um, like a tuna, which is a massage. You massage, a deep massage where you, on the sides of the spinal cord, you press. And you can, if there's pain there, that means there's a blockage. So this is a, and then as we go down, we'll go to the heart. T5 is heart and the pericardium. T4 before that is the um, um, hair follicles. Oh, that's hair follicles, then heart, pericardium. T6 is the esophagus, and also the diaphragm. So when we have lack of oxygen, we tap on the two lungs. There's points on the lungs here. And then we tap the T6, which helps uh, the nerve for the diaphragm. So if the diaphragm, uh, the electricity in the diaphragm, the energy in the diaphragm is not working, um, the pulsation, the stimulation helps to open up the nerve. There's not very much you have to do with the nerve. It's just pressing it, touching it, that you will make the difference. And as we go down the spinal, emotional problems are not just in the head, they're in the body. So that's where we're going down. So there's the liver, there's the bile duct, there's the gallbladder. These are all part of like T, from T7, T8, T9 is liver. Then the intestines, Small and large are um, 10, 11. And then we go down, there's the kidneys, the adrenals. And then as we go down, there is the uterus, the prostate. It's, we split it into three. One is from here, from the breast in between as one. Then the middle warmer is two. And uh, the lower uh, warmer is three. So we, now I'm tapping on the intestines. In the intestines, um, we create serotonin and dopamines. So very important that 
system. This is, you know, so the adrenalines, so uh, the, ad the adrenaline, the, the adrenaline and the uh, serotonin and the dopamines have to be manipulated so that we open up those pathways, which are, might be blocked, or even if they're not blocked, we want to be happy. So we use this, these points to open up. Um, if I come to the front, there's a meridian that runs down, a uh, kidney meridian that runs down right to the bottom of our um, feet. Um, so if I tap on certain parts of this meridian, they're like from 27 and they continue down, you know, the num numbers lessen as you go down. Um, they affect different parts, like for example, uh, 26 again has to do with your, um, uh, air, if your oxygen is lacking. So, you know, we'll do T2, T3, and we'll do K24. Now, if I go down the kidney points, I come to K22. This is the Gerlin hormone. This is where hormones for digestion also are created. And this is also where we, um, uh, like, part of the decision of are we hungry or not hungry, though the hypothalamus is connected with that. So, you know, when you're hungry all the time, there's something wrong. You're not supposed to be hungry all the time, you know, or when you're never hungry, you know. So these are ba imbalances and all of these can be balanced. You can, then we keep going down and we uh, tap on the kidneys in the front and also there's a kidney point in the back on both sides as kidney points. So then we can, if I go, if I look down, there's a red line to this point here. This we tap if um, we want to sort out the arteries. Like for example, you know, you have uh, arteries that are sluggish and we will tap on the neck. There are a lot of arteries that go to the brain, to the head from the neck and of course down and up. And there's the subclavian artery that goes into our right arm and it goes, as it goes up, it goes to the head. That is, so this, um, these um, arteries in the, the arm are really very important because if there's any blockage in that, then you can get a stroke, a damage. And that's how, uh, you know, when somebody says, oh, my arm hurts, and as you, um, if you don't understand that that is because it's the blood from the arm, especially on the right arm is going up to the, um, the brain. So in the brain, there are arteries in many different, like there's a cartoid artery, inner cartoid, outer cartoid, which runs just close to the ear. And so those, these are the um, arteries that need to be kept open. Because if they close, we're in, that's, we're in serious trouble. So to open up, we tap. We tap on these arteries and on the veins. And then if we look at the back of the head, there is, a, it's called the circle of Willis. Of course, it's men's names because they're the ones who found, discovered all this. So the circle of Willis is a name of a doctor. And uh, that is what, um, where the arteries, um, there's a circle of arteries at this, and it feeds all the brain, meaning blood to the brain. So this is a very important, again, important, like, you know, when you get um, Alzheimer's and you get um, all these different, um, um, you know, head diseases, they're usually the flow of blood is very slow. So not enough oxygen, not enough blood is able to filter into the brain. And then that causes like Parkinson is part of that. So, um, you know, it, um, so it's opening up the arteries, opening up the blood vessels, which then slowly bring back the brain 
to its normal healthy self. I'm going to go down to the legs. The sciatica is here. So any problems in the leg, we always find the sciatica nerve on both sides and then go down to the knees. And usually if the sciatica isn't working, then you will have back problems, knee problems, ankle problems, any problem that goes. Prefrontal lobe is the forehead. And that carries memories, portion of your memories, not everything, but recent memories. Then I'm going to go to the trigeminals. That's when you have uh, problems in the face and in the jaw. That is about here, near the ear, upper ear, the trigeminals. There are th three main nerves that run, one towards the eyes, towards the sinuses and cheeks, and towards the lower jaw. So if we open that, there's less tension in the face. And of, of course, that affects the eyes, the nose, the teeth, and muscles in the uh, face. So the trigeminals, there's two trigeminals on both sides. Actually, the trigeminals are really important because they also, uh, also connect to the ear. So many times when you have an ear problem, uh, the trigeminals are important to open up. And there's a facial artery that needs to be opened up, which is around the um, neck again. The brain and the body works in, uh, it usually has connects, like for example, if, I, um, if you're, say your mood is sad, you're not, you're not happy, you're sad. So what we will do is that we will um, connect the occipital lobe and we will um, connect to the hypothalamus and then we will connect to the first two, two C, one C, two C um, on the vertebras at the neck, which will release the tension that is um, building up in the, in the um, head. So there are a lot of different points in the head, in the um, brain that, um, that we can tap into and help it to normalize it. I know it seems pretty simple. <laughs> it seems like, how could that be? But we are sensual human beings. Just, I mean, I like to explain it this way. Like when we, for example, go to a movie, we um, have sensual feelings. If somebody's crying on the scene, we cry. Somebody's laughing, we laugh. And we use all of those, how it's just through our eyes. We use all that sensual um, energy. And we, as practitioners, also do the same. We use the same, uh, the eyes, the smell, the um, sensory cortex, the skin, skin senses. So we use the senses that are available to us. And through that, we are able to um, heal. How's everyone feeling? I was talking too much because I don't usually like to talk when I do my healing <laughs> that much. Open. But I just wanted to explain to you guys what, what I'm doing, you know. I actually feel quite open. Wow. Oh. I fell asleep. <laughs> That's because he's used to it. <laughs> I felt everything vibrating here. It was, Excellent. yeah. It was, it was as if something is moving. Yeah. I was gonna cry for one second, and well, then I said no. But no, I, you I should have cried. Sad. It's good to cry, because that's also another form of energy that you can release, and it's a healing. Um, it has a healing effect. It's a real healer. Any any other comments? Because this is strange, guys. It's a. 
I mean, like when we heal people, um, a lot of times the new ones, they're just like, what's going on? You know, what are you doing? You know, um, but I can give you a few examples, like, for example, you know, like some, some of the recent healings I've been doing. I, I, I'll give you three examples. One, I think I've already told um, Jaisal is that um, a friend of ours um, had a stroke about three years ago. And we didn't know, we didn't, I mean, you know, we weren't in touch, we had no idea. And um, so he was uh, out for uh, two years. And then, you know, they said, oh, we'll, we'd like to send him to hospice. And we, uh, so, you know, the, uh, the uh, friend's wife said, no, I'll take him home. I'll look after him. She didn't want to send him to hospice. And so we found out uh, nine months ago that um, this, this had happened through another friend. So we called each other, we connected. So I've been healing um, him for, I mean, he was totally, he couldn't move. Nothing was moving. Coma. He was in a coma. So um, I, I've been healing him for uh, once, uh, once a week for one hour um, for nine months now. So now he is walking. He's not talking yet. Um, he can go to the bathroom himself. He can eat. He can eat. Um, he's, you know, he has, uh, it's just that it's his um, tongue is still uh, problematic yet. He can read. But he can read. I mean, so, so he's come back to us in these um, nine months. Um, and it's, it's wonderful to see that um, just by, and for him, it's just because it, they live in Quebec. So it's too yeah. far. It's Skype. And so we do it through Skype, one hour every, um, every week. Um, and um, we've seen um, a tremendous, uh, I mean, it, it, it's like um, life and death. So he's back again uh, with us and, um, and his personality is there. He's just, I'm working on his throat and his tongue. Um, and I think for me, I think it's already connected to his brain. I don't think there's too much brain damage, but he's got, you know, it's the mobility of the neck. Neck is a very complicated, neck is very complicated. The throat is very complicated. The tongue is complicated. The back of the tongue is connected with our esophagus. The front of the tongue is we have certain points in our faces where, um, you know, if we tap, it will slowly open up the tongue and swallowing. So this is where he's at. I mean, when I tap for him, I can see him swallowing. He's trying. Um, and the other is like saliva. We work on the saliva gland so that there's liquid in his mouth so that he can swallow, you know, because you need all, I mean, we, we human beings don't realize that it's all of this is not, we don't, we have no control over it. And then when we see somebody changing and we're trying to bring all those things back to, um, to life again and unblock those areas, it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's so, it's beautiful. And it's beautiful for me because I think, you know, um, human beings don't need a lot of help. They just need some help to open up the blockages. Then your body works itself. You don't need trouble with medicines is that, um, you know, you want to give a medicine for a problem over here, but your whole body has to take that medicine. So what damage does it do? Does it have damage? And that we found that there's a lot of damage done by like, for example, say, you know, biggest thing is now is said, uh, take vitamins. But vitamin, the molecule of the vitamin can't get through to your system. It doesn't matter which um, vitamin you take. So what you're doing is that when you're digesting the vitamin, it's going to your kidneys, it's damaging your kidneys because it can't, it's overworked. We're overusing our kidney system. And then it has to... Um, release itself through your urine or your feces. So, you know, I mean, it, uh, we're just finding out a lot of uh, different things. And in this, we don't need medicines. 
and it helps both for uh, your body and your brain. So your brain function and your body function, they're, first of all, they're together. They're not, in the, they're not separated. They are together. And then, for example, you know, one of the, um, a lot of damage that is ha happening is to our hormones with the environment. And um, so, and especially for women, um, it's, uh, you know, we have a very sensitive um, organs that are being affected um, uh, greatly. So I think, um, you know, uh, if, I, if I give you another, which is a very quick um, example, is that I had a young woman, 25 year old, came to me and said, you know, I've never had my period. I haven't had my period and, I'm on, and I've been told I have cysts on my um, fallopian tubes. Um, and um, that if I, only time I can have a period is when I take medicine. And she hadn't been taking medicine for about six months. She said, I haven't, you know. So I said, okay, let's, let's see if we can work on it. We worked on it for a month. And she, and she had uh, pain in her back, uh, lower back. And she also, um, uh, because she wasn't having a period, she had hair um, on her face, like a beard, which she had to keep plucking. And she said, I tried everything for my face to get rid of it, like, you know, electrolysis and all, but it just wouldn't go away. And so when I tapped for her, then she disappeared after one month. And then she called me uh, like two, three weeks ago and she said, I've got my first period without any, any medicine. And also she said, the hair is reducing because it was, it's a connection with your hormones. So her, when her T, four was hair follicle was hurting she said it's burning and she said my back is lower back is burning because i was trying i said massage those areas and i'll keep tapping for you and um so you know uh, we of course she'll have to go to the doctor to find out like have the dis have the um cyst disappeared but she couldn't have her period if the cyst didn't disappear so she's now she's got a period and she ha and also the other effect that had on it, she said, I get very angry. I'm always angry. My head is always angry. I'm ready to, you know, fight with anyone. And she said, that's gone away. So, you know, the connections between uh, emotions, connections with the body, connections with the hormones, these are all, they're, they're a, a holistic um, uh, we're holistic beings and we need holistic approach to our bodies and I think you know from this is um, this system that um, Tom has uh, uh, created I think it's for the future uh, we're having very hard I mean uh, two okay another thing I can say is all the practitioners are the people that have went for healing a lot of them had cancer they all they uh, were cured from their cancer and they become they have become healers, meaning they you know want to help others. So um, and and of course there's other people also, but there are a lot of like you know some people like had eye cancer, so the eye cancer was cured. And um, you know what the other thing we always tell is like here in Dana Farber we tell the patients who you know they come to us when they're. They've, they've said, Dana Farber had said, says no to them. We can't do anything. They come to us and we tell them, go back and tell them where you're coming. So Dana Farber does know that we are here and, you know, thousands of people have been cured of many different diseases. Um, so it's, um, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, method that uh, we haven't really... Uh, the, because we are so bent on chemicals as chemical like we put chemicals on the land so we put chemicals in the body it's the same it's the same process we're going through and i think it can't be helped because you know systems create processes and this is um it's a money making process it makes huge money why would they want to change it to a doll and a hammer or a person you know doing it so I think it's, um, it's, 
it's going to be something for the future and and the lucky ones who get it now you know um i mean i just had a friend who had um, uh, they called it a rare blood disease so he said oh i've got this rare blood i said i don't care what rare it is but let's work on it and um, i've been working for him for three months and his counts have gone down uh, from 5,000 something to 2,000 something. So they, it's, it's, and, and this, um, this um, blood disease w was that his muscles are failing, that he can't lift his legs, can't lift his arms because the, um, you know, the, the, the nerves that go to the, the, the um, muscles aren't working well. And then that shows up in the blood so that, you know, they give you some medicine, but it didn't work for him. It's not working for him. And now we're seeing a change. He can lift his legs and arms and he can move. He feels yes, good. He walks, well. walks, he's walking. So it's, it's, um, it, it has logic behind it. I think that's really uh, logic and it has science behind it. It's just, it's a method that um, we haven't really, you know, <laughs> we're based, our spinal cord goes to all parts of our body. And, you know, and we have 12 um, uh, nerves that are um, in the brain that go, you know, are, uh, go to rest, to the rest of our bodies, but we, ha we don't look at the nervous system. We just look at digestive or, so, you know, we do metabolic system, we do the digestive, because once you uh, open the pathway, once your nerves are in correct order, then there's um, oxygen going to it, blood going to it. We're able to really uh, replenish. Um, I mean, like in cancer, uh, say for example, in cancer, we have uh, at least, I'd say over 90% um, success which is, um, you know. Especially in breast and prostate. Uh, breast and prostate are very big and skin is very big. I mean, skin is 99%. And also blood cancer. Yeah, blood cancer. Yeah, blood cancer is very high. Uh, these are very high percentages. Um, where do we have difficulty? I think we, where we have difficulty is in the kidneys yet uh, and the uh, pancreas. We're, we're doing better, but it's, you know, this, these are very complicated, the kidneys are very complicated uh, tissue and how to open up that tissue is a little more difficult. We do do it, but it's, 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 not, it's not as successful as some of the other cancers. So hi, Hardeep. Uh, you yeah. know, uh, I'm, I'm in India and I've been for quite a few years doing the emotional freedom technique, the different tapping uh, points. So uh, how is this similar to that? Because here, of course, you're tapping remotely onto a doll. There is yeah. an EFT we tap into our own bodies. I don't think it's, I, I think it's probably not different. It's just that, you know, um, uh, it, it, there are slight differences. We've, we've decided that we feel that the spinal cord, in other words, all the nervous system has points and we use all the points um, in the body to be able to heal. And then we're also able to, of course, you know, um, uh, deal with tumors. I mean, it's easier to deal with tumors in the brain than it is anywhere else. So it's like, um, because it's a soft softness, it's, um, there's no muscle in, in that way in the, um, the brain. So I think it's the same, similar. I, I think ideas are coming together from different, different areas, different people. Right. And, right. and, and, and it's, it's um, you, know, you know, it's developing. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think Thank it's, you. It, you know, it's really, um, the, uh, you know, there's just different people at different points are now seeing that there's other ways of doing things. Uh, and of course, it's old. It's not, this is not new, but I think under the, uh, you know, European dictate, um, everything else was washed away for, washed away, meaning it, it's still, reflected in in you know uh, the colonies but in a very different form but now i feel that it that is more it's coming forward more like for example you take meditation i mean i grew up in england so i know um, that you know you'd be laughed at if you said oh meditation helps you the doctors would laugh at you like huh 
you know so it's a uh, it's an it's taken a, a time after being colonized to be even able to start thinking about um you know the body in a different way and that body is part of nature that we're um, not that different from mm. the plants we're not that different from stones rocks we're not that different from um you know like we uh, all share our um uh, our you know being and um and i think um we're coming to a space where we're recognizing again because i think the older people older uh, cultures did uh, recognize that uh, and then it was um you know uh, put aside and um and now i think we're reconnecting i think mm. tom this is what he really did was he reconnected something to something 2000 years old um there was um you know there was some scrolls that were uh, found with this um you know these points he's he's redone the points but um you know this uh the voodoo doll uh, you right. know africa has the voodoo doll it's a very important it's it's the same this is the same now you know we when we don't want to get into trouble we just say we do voodoo so they can't put you under some other um uh you know category and right. and, and and tell you you can't do that because here you uh, one of the things like you're not allowed to say if you don't have a license you can't massage someone you know so we're like okay now we won't uh, we'll do you know we, we're doing voodoo so it's um it's uh it's uh, it's been i mean I, i've been doing this for 15 years and the reason um i i never felt very um um safe with um, medicines uh, cuz i had uh, i mean i grew up in england and i saw uh, my um you know like uh six his was uh ill sister die from just taking too much medicine over you know f like 15 years and no no he nothing healed and she had asthma and she then she dies from you know an attack asthma type um attack and that always um stayed in my mind that there was something wrong there's something wrong thing and and we had the welfare system so i i mean i want to even bring that up like what is it that you want when you have a healthcare system what do you want that health system to be what should it have you know how, what should its content be what its philosophy should be um because i mean if i grew up under a uh uh you know a universal healthcare in england but the problems are the same that if you're just going by the medicines and so you know that didn't change anything so you know if you don't look at the body uh, from a holistic or start to at least come to that there is much other ways of doing things uh to be able to heal and and one of the most important thing is how we live like when we are made insecure in our lives uh that means uh insecurity means unhealth we can't be healthy in an in insecure world so i think we've got a lot to um mm. think about yeah. and if you want to add yeah, yeah another aspect of this healing is bioelectricity yeah. and uh, it's very well documented in fact michael levine here at tufts he has a cancer lab so the simple concept of bioelectricity is that your nerves are like cables and the signal from your brain travels to your organs through nerves if there is a blockage in the nerve so the signal doesn't travel so you have a disease so that's you know nerve can be unblocked either mechanically that is massage or you know like electronically mm. by using ultrasound and laser beam and third is through collective unconscious that is tapping mm. 
So Michael Levine has been doing this work that he has shown. You can Google Michael Levine Tufts Cancer Lab. And he has shown that just by regulating the bioelectricity of your body, you can increase the size of a tumor, decrease it, or completely finish it. So in this healing, bioelectricity is very, very important. important. Mm -hmm. And another aspect of this bioelectricity is piezoelectricity. Piezoelectricity was discovered almost 100 years ago in Italy by Dr. Giovanni. So that is that when you press something, it gives rise to certain kind of electricity. So your bones store that electricity. So when you walk or when you receive a massage, certain electricity is generated. And that is what then is uh, used for healing as well. Um, I have a question. Uh, this is Nandita. Um, how do you um, how do you find uh, the problem in the body? And also, I, I guess I have two questions. And also, do you ever heal um, plants or things out you know other than humans? Uh, do uh, animals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we've Horse, done animals. Horses, dogs, <laughs> even elephants. <laughs> yeah. um, how do we find? Uh, usually, we we try not to find. We ask the per patient, the person to find out from their doctor, like diagnosis from their doctor. Just because, you know, you have to be very careful how you do all this. Meaning, you know, we're not trying to play God. Mm. We're just saying, okay, they come, usually they come with the problem and say, well, the doctor says I have this, this, this. And then we can start from there. So, and then we send them back to the doctor and we say, go, now go back to your doctor and, and go and see, like go and get a, you know, MRI or whatever needs to be done, a test, a blood test, go and check it out. You know, mm. but we don't, um, we're very careful with that. Uh, we, we're not trying to prove anything here. We're actually mm. healing. And then we want them to go back to their doctors and see, is there a difference? You know? Right. I mean, the As, reason I ask, the reason mm. I ask is that if, if let's say, I don't feel inclined towards going to a doctor and I can feel something is going on. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and if I were to come to this method yeah. of healing, then how does we one do know. know about it? Yeah, we, uh, we, uh, I mean, we do know how to, because you'll tell by what your experience is. Mm. Say you symptoms. have a pain symptoms. If, you're, right. if you have a, a pain in your leg, we will, um, you know, where is the pain? What, you know, so we will figure it out um uh, very easily of what needs I, to I do have pain in my leg by the way <laughs> it's okay. it's incidental that you that's the example that you well you know with your tapping actually i started feeling more and more uh, tired and i wanted yep, to yeah uh, that's, that's, that's yeah that's when healing takes place yeah because your brain wave goes down yeah and that sort of how uh, relaxes you yeah and mm. you that's when healing starts yeah you know, a, a lot, it's so much, I mean, I know one has the tap and the doll, but you, what's really important, it's that brain wave, brain to brain is what's healing. Mm. You know? So um, I, when you say uh, I've got, uh, say, a back and it might be the sciatica, then my thinking and my tapping will go to that portion. Mm. Mm. It'll, it'll concentrate mm -hmm. on that. And that concentration of the practitioner uh, doesn't have to happen. You can, it's, um, uh, it's automatic. Mm. Because we, we try, what our healing um, conception is that uh, we don't do it individually. We have already a group of uh, people that, um, um, so our healing is getting like stronger and greater and when if I just tap on uh, your um, say back lower back, it's that uh, and that um, uh, healing power of the collective, which comes mm -hmm. into and heals. So it's I it's just it's um, I mean you know I'm not a believer in God, but this has um, <laughs> opened up a, uh, that. There's so much we don't know mm. that's mm. around yeah. us. I, you know, 
that we are not aware. We're just aware. Of, we only have five, six senses that we try to work with, but we don't even know our internal selves. Never mm -hmm. mind the outer. You know, so uh, it's. Um, I mean, it's a very interest. I mean, uh, it's making me think about many things. It makes me mm -hmm. think about um, how do we perceive things, you know, and and how important then. Um, you know, the system you live in, because that's what you're born into. So that's automatic mm. for you. That is, you think that is your loving space, right? The society mm. that's in around you. It's only later as you keep on experiencing different things, you're saying, yeah, well, maybe this is not the way. But I think naturally you think that is, because that is what holds you, right? It, it, you th it, it's supposed to be a protection space, protecting you as an individual, as together. And um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, so if you tell me it's your lower back and um, if it's going into your leg, then, you know, it, it, um, it can be the pudendal nerve mm. or it can be the sciatica. And then of course there's other nerves that connect to that, but that's your main, main nerves there. Mm -hmm. So those are the two I would say is, um, yeah. And it can be from here that, um, you know, the message is not going through because it, the nerve is weak. So, the, uh, the, uh, you know, it needs to be strengthened. And this is what we do in tapping. We, and, you know, we also strengthen the nerves mm -hmm. and open the block wherever the block is, if it's in the brain or if it's in the back itself. So, uh, and it works. It's, it's working. It's working. That's what's, um, and, and we can't prove it. We don't have that kind of money to do the, um, you know, the, uh, the theoretical and, say, and prove all this. And um, so we do it. And so our proof is only in the healing percentage. And not, we, I mean, we tried um, some, uh, uh, one time connecting with some students we knew in Harvard, but um, then nobody wants to touch it. Huh. You know, uh, yeah, it, 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 the the collective unconscious uh, healing is is remarkable and extraordinary. It's sort of like it's sort of like the lid just blows off, blows the, mind, off. the yes. brain completely. It's phenomenal. I mean, and and the other interesting part is, like, um, say you know uh, we get brown people, they'll take it easily. Like they'll say, okay, this you know, uh, and white people have a lot of problems. Mm. Like we we I mean I know a lot of people who have died but they wouldn't come they couldn't do it because they thought it's hocus pocus it's magic so you know we've seen you know how your system affects you how completely it affects you and you know some of us are coming from other cultures so we still have the relics of those systems and we've seen how, you know, that some, something is different. But when you're born into one kind of space, and that's the only space you know, and when you break through, I mean, like we do break through that, and then you see these people, I mean, then everything opens up for them, you know? And then there's a flowering of that person because now they're like, oh my God, I didn't know this could take place, you know? Like, I, I, I could get better. Because every, you know, they'd been told they were going to die, and they would would die, but because those openings took place, and in the same way, I think the brain is. Um, that's how you know, like um, uh, the brain opens up in the same way. There, there are points where you, you know, like some say, for example, somebody's having, um, um, uh, feel, uh, like they can't concentrate, or they can't read, you know. It's not, you can fix it. There's actually spaces where you can fix if they can't write, they can't read, they can't, memory's a problem. So there are all these different um, avenues of, um, of opening up um, our bodies and, um, and living a good life, a well, a well, well life. And, you know, so, uh, but this is going to be a struggle. I don't think this, you know, this is either it'll, um, you know, they, I'd like, for example, if they want, uh, I think it was Google that wanted to buy his machines. 
because we also have laser machines. We do a lot of um, healing machines. And the thing that Tom said, no, he said, because this is not just to do with a machine. He said, it, the machine itself is only part. It is how it's done and how we connect and the unconscious collective is so important. Where are they gonna get that from? You know, not with the, just the machine. So it's a really, um, it's, it's, and even money, you know, if you're, if, if your only interest is, you know, um, trying to get somewhere and make a buck, then I think you also lose something. Not that, you know, the, um, you know, if you need to make, that's okay. But how, how the, you know, the pra practitioner looks at the other, the, the person in front of them is really important. What is our connection between each other? Is it fully on, you know, I want to heal and you want to be healed? That relationship is so important and it can't be, I think, removed or moved away from. It's the, that love, if you want to call it, the love of, of being and you want other beings to be well. So if we bring that together, I mean, there's, so it's a very mixed, um, I mean, I think, you know, it's, uh, it's many formed, but I do like that um, it's also dealing with um, where we're at. So, you know, we, we try to do what we can. I, um, yes, it was interesting, but I was too focused on listening to you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't matter because yeah. for me it's more about uh, uh, opening uh, more and more practices that have this kind of relation to our own bodies that is more the idea that the body can heal itself is very important and also uh, uh, understanding that fear contributes to the sickness and creates sickness and in a way it's a long process for for us personally let's say what is personally it's always the relation that is the, yeah. the, the uh, important right now in this uh, uh, space let's say I say I see Mari and James who have been for us very important in, 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 in a way, uh, uh, part of our uh, path of decolonizing mm. our own relation to the body. Of course, we can be speaking and reading all we want, but it's a, it's a process of sharing with them because they are not telling us in, in the sense of that's how you do it. It's more mm -hmm. over 10, years i don't remember 15 years maybe yeah. of longer of of going there and uh, speaking and uh, you know the practice of acupuncture uh, yeah. understanding it more from this feeling and in very important the relation and friendship that we created and also that has been created and, and then ayurveda and the, the yeah. idea of I mean, uh, some we, you know, some doctors in Ayurveda were saying, well, Ayurveda doesn't doesn't have uh, one thing anymore, which is surgery, and this is what Western medicine we acknowledge can do. But the problem is they resort to it immediately. immediately. For Ayurveda, yeah. it is a last, last, last resort yep. that yep. you yeah. come to that, and also to recognize in the room Carla and Thomas, who are also. Yes. Uh, working from movement, dance, and how it re you know we get very important. We get approach. We are approaching also to art and the senses, and you know touching and feeling, and uh, how it is not neutral. Basically, yeah. the sounds and the images we are confronted with, mm -hmm. the images that people forward are not uh, new neutral. The language everything we take into and that can cause problems blockage i don't want to something yeah, in no, our body you know understand. That, that, yeah. and neuroscience tells us you know the mirror neurons yeah they affect you tremendously yeah. that you know when you see something your mirror neurons are activated and they have a big impact on you 
And also the, the motor cortex um, and the sensory cortex, uh, it, the, it's the eyesight that has the biggest space, meaning you, it's what you're seeing has a huge effect on you. Even you know more than hearing and other things, but your eyesight because we take it all in what we see, and then it the head has to sieve out what it wants, where it wants to keep it, what it wants to do with it. So this image, these images are, uh, they have uh, a huge impact. I mean, I want to tell you just a little story. I think this tells you how how impacted we are. There's, um, I mean, uh, a tribe that, I mean, I don't know if they're living now, but there's a, there was a tribe that uh, would say to their, you know, if, uh, if there was some trouble, they'd say, find out if somebody's lying, they'd say, jump over that stick. Jump over this stick. What that meant was, if the per but because you're so connected to, the, to your being and to that tribe, that if you jumped over that stick and you lied, you died. And you did die. Meaning, in other words, your belief, you're believing, and that's what we're finding with cancer people, is that the minute they're told that they've got cancer, what's on their mind is death. So it's like we, this impact that we, you know, we think we don't have, we have huge impact of the social society around us and you know of medicine and what is told to us if you don't take it you will die i mean that's the that's um and the minute cancer is on your lips that person's already dead that's how much fear that has been put into that human being and then they're ready to do whatever is being told to you to do so it's a i mean it's I think it's just part of the system we live in. It's, it's destructive in, in every way, in all ways. And, and, and that is what we're facing. And we really, we as um, healers, um, uh, you know, really struggle when we see people that um, um, have been given that information and they can't get rid of that death feeling. So we have to then again, uh, you know, bring bring the emotional level to tell them that no, you're not going to die. This these are the, the these things are curable, and then we tell them why why they're curable. What what are we doing? You know, that like we're bringing in oxygen into your system. We're um, you know opening that those pathways that are closed. So that the, all of this opening, and then that. Um, tumor which is like a you know a, a dead weight is going to loosen up and it's going to disappear and that's what happens but it, to come to that it's you know you have to win the confidence um, of that human being you have to they've got to now trust you and we try to build that trust and i think that is the trust and the love and then of course you know um, sort of the knowledge you're giving of like, why, why does this make sense when they can't do it with all the money, all the machines, all the, and, and then when they see a little bit of success, they are, then, you know, your, your, their confidence and that um, feeling of death disappears. So it's really interesting motions to see in human beings that what we're going through and the pain we're put through when we've got an illness. It's, it's so criminal, it's, but it can't, it's not, can't be helped because this is the structures we've built. Let, let me tell you a funny story. We had a professor from Boston College. He had problem, he could not speak. So after two months coming to, we used to have a class in Spalding Hospital at Mass General Hospital, uh, their rehabilitation. So he came a couple of months, he was professor of history. And then he started talking. The moment he started talking, he started arguing that how this system doesn't work. <laughs> the one that's helped him, you know? No, but it's a, such a psychological, it's a, it's a psychological, um, just 
like we are our own enemies many times in the sense that we can't understand. Uh, Grading from Mexico, I'm Marilu, and I have a question that is if, if you have ever tasted this healing with psychiatric illness, and the second one is that how we can learn this method. Mm. Um, yes, uh, we do uh, an emotional class. I do it with one other friend of mine. And um, we are able to help on the emotional, like, you know, any, any problem with the, um, the, the, the brain, we are able to help. Because, uh, you know, uh, one of the things I think, uh, the more knowledge that we're getting, we're able to hone in to uh, where the problem is. Is the problem in the hypothalamus? Is it in the thalamus? Is it in the limbic brain? Or is it in all of those and how do we heal? We're able to use um, this um, uh, doll and the, uh, you know, uh, brain, our own entrainment and the lasers. And we're able to, because we, we think, we believe that psychological problems and are connected with the body, that they're together. And we are able to um, um, heal. So we have, yeah, we, we do that. It can be learned. I am not a doctor. I'm a, actually a fashion designer. So nothing to do with medicine. And um, I would say 50% of the people that are healing, uh, they just, they, they um, began to love this healing, meaning that they got cured themselves. Then they just learned. Tom has made it very simple. It's just points. First, you just, you, you just follow him points like, you know, C1, C2, C3, C4, 6, you know, like T1, T5, T, and then he'll say that this is the point and you learn. And you don't have to do anything else. You can just have mm. that and you heal. You, I, I am interested in something else. So I want to know. I want to know what's going on in the head and what each organ is doing and how it's doing it. That's my personal preference. But you, you don't have to know anything. Yeah. You use the doll uh, or you use tuna where pressing the points and you can, uh, you know, that's yeah. how easy, that's what I love that Tom has done is that he doesn't want it to be specialized. He want, he's brought it to the people. And that's where I call it revolutionary, that people themselves can use it and heal each other. It doesn't have to be um, you know, specialized. Yeah, I mean, the specialization can take place. I'm not, I'm not concerned with that, but, but how do we help each other? And, and it's working. Mm. That's, that's the too. that's the important point, you know. And yes, we can. So you know, if we can slowly connect, and if anybody wants to learn this, it can be taught free. We don't charge. Nothing is charged. I mean, I don't charge at all or anything. It's all, and uh, and Tom doesn't. There's no charge for the class. There's no charge in learning. So there's. It's a wonderful environment. I mean, that space is. Uh, a space of love and care and um, you know it's a very it's a different space he's really you know has a sensibility of being you know a Taoist and and having his way of that most important is um, not just humans but all collectives all you know uh, species so I and think he also has online classes yeah. So you can join online classes. Yeah. And they are very powerful as well. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, learning, if you want mm -hmm. to do the learning for, uh, and, and people will, uh, I mean, they people will go and teach. Not a problem. There's, we've been, uh, we went to Italy, you know, to teach. And they came here to there's learn. Somebody in Mexico. Well. And, uh, yeah. It's all right. So, you know, there's... Uh, Possibil there's possibilities because we're open. We want this to grow for human beings, for humanity. That's what's important um, uh, for us, that it grows. And um, especially it's not 
it's not taking medicines, it's not left in the hands of somebody else, it's in our hands as human beings and we can use it and we can create and we can heal. There's nothing like that. Um, Is there any difference uh, between uh, healing someone that is near you in his or her physical presence or healing with your practice, someone who is far away? We do both, by the way. Well, yes, yeah. I understand, uh, but there is, yeah. a, there is any difference. I mean, because of course, one thing is the body with all yeah. his senses, yeah. the presence of the body, the, <laughs> I would say the social distance, <laughs> yeah. as they are saying today, the physical uh, approximation. And uh, another thing is uh, uh, the uh, idea of this body, uh, the, 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 the thing that the, this body is not there at all, so you have to deal with something else or not? Um, uh, we do long distance healing. So that means like I'm doing some healing someone in Pakistan at this moment on the um, telephone. Um, there's no, uh, there's no uh, like time and space doesn't matter. So time and space doesn't matter because that's, I mean, this is part of the, um, the science we're learning that, um, you know, you ca things can be in two places at the same time. So the distance then, it, you know, so, so, so if I'm doing long distance, it is as powerful. The only um, difference would be, say, for example, that um, I need this person to get a massage, right? To open some, some block is not unblocking with the healing that I'm doing. Then we need to unblock it. That's the only physical um, you know, time we would need. Otherwise, I think personally, I think the long distance healing is more powerful than the, um, the healing that you do physically. More mm -hmm. powerful. Yeah. So time and space is no problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's with the entanglement, the yeah. quantum entanglement of particles. Yeah. So time and space really are not uh, relevant. Yeah. Well, I agree with everything which has been said. I, I just would like to add something which is that there is something beyond the nervous system. Absolutely. And I think, yeah, and I think in, in this situation when we talk about, like with, we are living right now with yeah. the virus and talking a lot about immune functions, yeah. like the immune the immune functions are beyond the nervous system. It's like oh, a yeah. cellular organization. And I think uh, there is sometimes too much focus on the nervous system, like with the fear and uh, it's interfering with, with like what we might call the healing of the body, which Absolutely. is, yeah. it's yeah. not really happening in the nervous system. There needs to happen a lot of healing in the nervous system, I agree. Yeah. But there needs to be also uh, healing happening beyond the nervous system on that kind of cellular organization. So we need to leave the the body or the we need to leave the cellular organization a little bit. We need to give space to it. Yes, but to I, organize. But at the same time, I'm Carla. <laughs> oh, no, I, yes. I think um, it was very, very uh, rich, Ardip. Thank you for, I mean, I personally I fell asleep. I came later and I was very tired. But uh, what I got, uh, I mean, beside what Thomas is just saying of uh, also looking at that, uh, at that level of organization of the living, but it felt like, uh, uh, addressing the nervous system is exactly addressing the blockage. Yeah. Mm. Yes. It is like uh, it's the nervous system that is projecting a blockage. Yes. So yeah. in a way, it's like the a very good entrance door to to knock at that door and uh, 
and do, and to really like uh, go through uh, all the potential points where the nervous system is uh, stuck in projecting. Okay, there is a pain there, there is a problem there, and it's keep firing uh, all these informations. Mm -hmm. So it is very, I mean, uh, it. I got very inspired. It's it's very um, rich, and uh, and I find also that the power of this approach is that by uh, taking one entrance, uh, it's like you really are channeling uh, a specific uh, uh, question that you are addressing the system. So it, it is. Uh, I, I find it very powerful. Yeah. The, to answer Tom. We actually use uh, a lot more, I mean, a lot yeah. more than this. Yes. For example, we use negative ions to open the cellular channels mm -hmm. uh -huh. yes. so that they can pair. Uh -huh. And yeah. then that opens up and slowly, slowly disease. And that yes. really strengthens the immune system. Yeah. So both your innate and other immune system, they get activized. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, I didn't want to complicate it. Yeah. With, yeah. So we use a lot of, especially yeah. uh, quantum entanglement, we yes. use it a lot. Yeah. It's, um, you know, so, but this, because here in US, I don't, I don't know in Italy, but in the US, they won't allow you to use the, um, the nervous system. Yeah. Oh, in Italy. Yeah, it's only on, you know, because pharmaceuticals have huge interest in selling, yeah. um, they will sell machines to, um, help you with maybe certain things in the, uh, not especially now in the, um, uh, you know, these uh, pharmaceutical, uh, you know, yeah, machines. They, that they are call coming. them electroceuticals. Actually, yeah. Pfizer yeah. is uh, investing $5 billion in developing pacemaker. Yeah. So they can put on your vagus nerve. Mm -hmm. So that to will regulate yeah. the supply of your elect bioelectricity to, let's say, your liver. So yeah. that will cure liver cancer. Hmm. So, you know, like uh, two years ago, there was a huge, uh, big article in Newsweek. So if you Google electroceuticals, you will find, you know, uh, that hmm. also. So, you know, yeah, yeah. so, um, but I think, uh, Thomas, what you're saying is we do, we're, you know, we're much further beyond. I mean, even this much, we're having a hard time uh, people believing. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, the, the reason why we, I mean, we wanted to set it up, this was the beginning of the, of this Tongren system mm -hmm. uh, of, um, you know, looking, you know, going beyond the meridians from the old meridian <laughs> thought process to this new, uh, you know, that this, we followed the European and the, uh, the Western, uh, you know, uh, uh, lines of how we looked at the, um, nervous system but it's that's just part it's a small part of it yeah for example yeah. this is a this is a little uh, you know gadget that generates negative ions yeah, yeah. Mm. and then this is then uh, coupled with nanometer yeah because electrons are too big but nanoparticles, nanoparticles can yeah. actually pierce your tissue and then sort of yeah. energize yeah. and heal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We we are beyond, but I think this um, uh, this is a basic. The nervous. basic nervous system is really important, in the sense anybody you know. I mean, these machines are already exist. We we have them now here, um, but um, this can be you know somebody has a doll and a right. hammer, and even if they don't, I mean, I can do the same thing on my hand. I don't have to have a doll and a hammer because it's, um, I, I mean, it's brain to brain. Yeah. It's the collective. It's the, the energy force from the healer to the, to the patient and vice versa. We're entangled. It's the entanglement is what's really there. Um, and then I can go, uh, when I do this, I can go to the nervous system in that entangled form to say, okay, I am, I'm going to be tapping on um, Thomas's pituitary gland. So I think that, you know, so I can tap 
mm -hmm. on, uh, you know, I, I'm say I'm, I want to tap on the left eye. I can tap on the left eye. I have to just think of the left eye tap and it's, and the tapping is only, I can do it even without tapping. Mm. I can go just to your eye because we're entangled it, with each other. The relationship is there at this moment. And um, you will feel that effect. I just did that on someone who fell in Pakistan. She fell and hurt her, both her eyes and she called and I, she said, um, you know, uh, you know, I'm having a tough time. So I said, okay, so, uh, you know, I did my thing. And then she called me, um, then texted me half an hour later. She said, the redness is gone. Mm. I said, okay, good. So it's that much in time that we, that part of our mind, ha brain has been closed to say that we're individual, we're this, and we're in, only in this, in this body. No, we're not. We're, we're far beyond that. It's just that um, we have to open this brain and open this mind. And we have to have space where we can open this together yeah. to really e evaluate ourselves. I think we are magical human mm. beings and everything here is magical. But we can't, um, we are not allowed, we, we, we're being um, stifled in our humanity and we need to reopen and that you know not only human beings but you know all beings or all species have wonderful ways i mean the animals have their own way of um, creatures have their own way of doing healing being and we are caught up in a very narrow form at this moment in which but when we do open this we are going to be flying because it's going to be that kind of power uh, that we're, you know, we will be able to achieve for ourselves a far, you know, far phenomenal kind of life. Um, and not of consumer items. I mean, if you're, I mean, if we're just pleasured by consumer items, that's pretty sad. We've got, we've got long ways to go in that sense. Ardeep, I want to add, you said the word how we are entangled. Yeah. Tomorrow we have a friend of, um, friend of friends of ours um, who will come and talk at Beaver, but he uses this concept of identity or blackness as an entanglement in our social, in our sociality and he, he connects it to jazz. Oh yeah. Like he says that it's a spooky business that happens. Yeah that identity or whatever that concept of blackness is a spooky, a yeah. spooky thing. Yeah. And it's where the level of how jazz works. Yeah, no. I level mean, of you entanglement and you play with it. You don't. Yeah. I mean, when you get into that state, you know, when you get into that state, the insular is a very important, I mean, they're just studying it now, but that's where addiction takes place. That's mm -hmm. where we, our addiction resides. So addiction, we think it's, oh, what a terrible thing, but it has two aspects to it. Addiction also means wonderful music. We want to listen to it all the time. That can be addiction too. So, you know, uh, instead of just the pill, addiction. So, but it's, a, it's an important role it plays. So addiction doesn't mean addiction is all bad. It's just the direction and, and you know, like, um, if, um, if, if your society is in such a, such a way that you're, you don't have the space to grow into this, this, this head that, uh, this mind and head we have and to give it a pleasurable and all the other things it needs, uh, the space will be so different, you know, if we can give it that. But instead we're narrowing it, we're fearful, we're you know, holding so tight that we're mentally so blocked as yeah, humanity, we, you know? We need to smash capitalism <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as part of the equation. Without it's, that. it's too narrow. It's, yeah. it's a narrow life at this moment. And it's so wonderful when, I mean, I just feel so blessed that I, I have this, um, 
uh, thing in hand. In, and when somebody tells me, oh, I feel better, I, I can't tell you what it makes me feel like when they say, oh, I feel better, you know? So it's, uh, and, and it, that's how life grows, right? How, how, that's how you feel, you know, that you're, you have some purpose and you human beings, you connect, you love, you care, you all of those things. Uh, and, 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 and we've got to keep building it. And I think, um, you know, we're very fortunate. We have, we have found this. And this is a very, I mean, interesting that I um, used to go to a um, herbal, um, a Chinese herbal uh, medicine, you know, the teas they give you. I mean, I went there for years and he's the one who introduced me to Tom. So, you know, life works in such wiggles and ways that when you have a desire of something, it also comes to you. In, in, in different ways. So I don't know, there's so much out there that needs to be, um, you know, like nurtured, cared for, loved. And as we do that, we just keep on um, increasing that side of our, um, our, our, our being um, and, and, and yes, keep I looking see, at it. Hardeep, I see Mari and James smiling. And did you want to add something? Where are because they? they are our our healers in New York. We yes. all <laughs> Hi. Hi, please everybody. come on. <laughs> hey everybody. Um, when there is a blockage, you know we tend to have a sickness, right? And then where? So what we want to do is so when there is no blockage, we want to keep it. And uh, so that when the prevention comes in. Mm -hmm. You know, when we feel it, we want to flow it. Um, uh, in, with your method, uh, do you use that for the prevention, preventive method? Do you, people do it on a regular basis? Um, yeah, I think, yeah. I, I think what we do, you find that people that come to us, then what they'll do once they're healed, they'll still come every month once a month or twice two times you know every two months for a tune-up <laughs> for a tune-up yeah 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 so it's um i think it's an ongoing i i think you don't ever stop because you realize that your body uh can get a blockage anytime it yeah. can be blocked again so i think a lot of people um they come on class on on the uh, computer online. in the online or they come to physically because they want to meet with you too. They want to hug you. You want to hug them. So there's a lot of uh, interaction. The interaction stays. Mm -hmm. You don't go away. They don't go away. We stay together. It's really interesting what you just asked. It's really mm -hmm. important that you, you've mm -hmm. bonded with each other. You've bonded on a way that they, there's trust in both sides really care because you've treated them and you love it. And they've gotten that treatment and they love you. But then we also have cases <laughs> yeah. like uh, Tom treated Mitt Romney's wife. She had breast cancer and, you know, they had said she was going to die. Yeah. So she came so to us. She came yeah. and then she got healed. But she didn't want to tell anyone that she, because yeah. of political reasons, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you know, this is voodoo. Yeah. And Romney is Mormon, so it was gonna. Yeah. So, so you know, just, different people, different yeah, things. You yeah. Know. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, but we do have a lot of people stay. That's how a lot of our practitioners they had the, had cancers, and then they you know wanted to heal others, and so they they become practitioners and they 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 connect, and so we have hundreds of practitioners uh, like uh, you know California everywhere there's there's a lot of people that do this healing and um, and then we connect somewhere or another and we're always connected because we are connected in that you know collective unconscious um, space but there's a lot of love in it I don't know I can't explain that but we all really like it's a very it's it's beautiful I suppose when you heal each other there your your connection is of a very different type because you're not using each other you're not getting something from each other you're not trying to get something from each other you're just 
you, 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 you're feeling fantastic. Yeah, you share the journey. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and same thing. Thank you very much. It was absolutely lovely to hear you. It's lovely to hear people who are passionate about uh, connecting to uh, energies other than the you know, accepted current Western medicine because there's so much more. You talked about you know, limitations of society and upbringing, and I think it's just human limitations. Mm -hmm. you know, I believe that this is all that there is, but that's not true. Yeah. There's so much more than that. And you know, I've just, you know, at least in this lifetime, if not lifetime after lifetime, I've just believed that this is it. And so yeah. in connection with something that Irene said, that a lot of what happens is the uh, conversations, you know, years of conversations and years of connection. And we're, I'm pretending to be the doctor and she's pretending to be the patient. But the truth is, we're growing together. together. And, uh, yes. we're, we're each learning together that, that those limitations that we think are true just aren't true. And, uh, you know, for me, I've been doing this now 20 years and it's I'm sure I've gotten much more than I've given. You do get. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And you know, the, the, you know, the, um, we, we have, like, like Mari said, you know, it's, we have different modalities, but the truth is it's just different words. The modality yeah. is exactly Yeah, yeah, exactly. Same. You're right. <laughs> you, know, you, you call it brain, I call it heart. You know, it's the yes. same, you know, the yeah. same interconnectedness. And yeah. uh, so, you know, these kind of communities, these kind of gatherings, is just one more, one more electron on the side of people understanding, exactly, yeah. one more electron yeah. on the side of people being able to connect to this type of healing. It, it's, it's so powerful. And, and to bring it into, you know, you know, what Jessa was talking about and others, that this is, you know, it, it's not just our bodies, it's the communities as a whole. Oh, exactly. And this is how we begin to these conversations but it's just a little bit, one more electron on the side of peace and loving and kindness and compassion. And so thank you very much for, for the time and for the treatment. I appreciate it. <laughs> I wish I wasn't talking while I was doing, but it's okay. <laughs> you couldn't hear the hammer if you weren't talking. Yeah, that's, oh uh, yeah, yeah. It was just, it's some, yeah, problem here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't have to hear it. It's, it's actually more than that. The hearing is, that's a psychological thing. I mean, we, uh, nobody needs to hear anything. As long as you have intention you and the other person knows it's being done, that's all it needs. But also uh, illness and pain is a language of our body when uh, we cannot uh, talk uh, in, a, in another way. Our So I think that uh, every kind of, um, of um, healing need a change. So uh, a healing way need a gesture from, of love, but also a movement from who uh, received this gesture. Mm -hmm. So I, I, um, uh, um, this results in general from um, the meeting between healer and uh, um, ill passion. Passion. Okay, mm -hmm. and I, I'm I'm curious about um, how uh, it can be um, it can happen this meeting in your way. Uh, it it is the human encounter that actually really counts. Um, it's you know especially this um, when we do this long distance. It's not the doll the doll and the hammer is just a um, concentration to concentrate the mind but it's the mind the mind two minds or many minds that are getting together and the healing takes place we spoke to Chinsia yeah. before and it was uh, in relation for example to the uh, school that Chinsia posso dire certo grazie uh, when there is uh, currently the idea in, uh, in, in hospitals when people who have the virus are left alone. So mm -hmm. there is no warmth, which is at the basis of Chinsia's for her experience. 
this this warmth but touch of, also touch mm. of being there with the person to receive this is very important mm -hmm. and in, in this current moment in the healing process in the current moment it's totally cut off because of this so i think okay. maybe question is coming from. the question is uh, partially is is this concern no we we um, are able to um like when somebody's in the hospital or is having an operation we tap for them and we have no telephone we have no access to them but once we have the intention in our mind and they've been told that, that somebody's going to be doing this for you we are connected so it, it, this is very powerful. It's just, it's, it's when you both sides know that something's going to take place, um, you don't need anything. It will, my, it's a signal. The, the signal has to get to the other person and the signal is that they know that you're going to be doing this. That's it. Actually, when, even when we do 20 minutes, half an hour, it's actually the signal. Once the signal goes through to the body, the body then has taken it up. We just do a lot more tapping because it's psychological. Our psycholog psychology needs it. Our brains need, you know, our thinking needs it. Otherwise, the, once the signal is through, the intention is there, the signal is through, the body's already got it internally. It's that fast. It's a very fast, it's not a, it's not a slow structure. It's actually a very, it's just one, that's it, you've got it. But we are, as human beings, we don't, we're not on that uh, plane yet of thinking in that way. And we have to then, you know, do a lot more tapping to make sure that they, one understands. Otherwise, it's something else going on. It's a different connection. But the intention is so important that I'm thinking I'm going to heal this person. I'm thinking that it's their problem is in their brain and which part of the brain. And you concentrate, horn into that, and that's it. We connect on many different forms, and tapping is another connection. It's a different connection. And also, it's a different people have different language. For example, when I talk to my physicist friends and try to explain them this healing, so I focus on quantum healing. I, you know, then we talk about, you know, like how this healing takes place at quantum level. Yeah. Yeah. That they understand very well because they have, and they have no clue of the nervous system. They can't, they can't understand that. It seems to me the most rich part of it, though, is uh, something that is very rare that I also think maybe if we think more on a like a longer scale of history, um, like many things when they became codified, they mm -hmm. become like something for experts. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. I, I feel that, you know, in this kind of place we're at, let's not call it a stage, um, especially when you have kind of this production of people who just think in terms of economy, um, everything has to be monetized. Yes. Uh, it's, it's a, and there are many aspects to it. It's not just monetization. I mean, institutionalization also is the beginning. That's what one of the lessons, I mean, among other people, Ivan Illich was so focused on, you know, that the fact that when you institutionalize care, you produce basically impotence and people no longer are able to see that they can care for themselves. And communities also are not able to see that they are the real caretakers of a place. And so the, that place is also our bodies and healing is uh, a big part of that uh, kind of potential of thinking transversal politics because as, as Fulvia was saying, I mean, we, in that sense, I mean, the, the virus is just one expression 
of that kind of truth that we're all being exposed to this kind of violence uh, around us. But the, the fact of uh, the, our immunities or the, the, the levels of kind of support are not the same, obviously. And maybe one of the challenges I see is how to create an ethics within those practices that refuses this kind of capitalization on it. Exactly. And so, like, I think often of this kind of uh, uh, Stallman and this kind of uh, idea of if you take something that's free, uh, freely given to you, that you have to still keep it in the uh you can't privatize it right um, exactly. you know in the in the open source community i mean it just re required this protocol to say if you borrow a code from something that was freely given then you have to also make it not kind of closed and yeah. that's kind of prerequisite that's that that i don't know how to create these kind of uh ethical let's say structures within these healing communities uh that that prevent this kind of uh enclosure basically that i think is very common it's what 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 the university teaches it's what exactly, the society yeah. teaches so how i mean on the one hand you have the practice and on the other hand you have this kind of uh of course some people need to survive and so it's not uh sometimes they exchange something for something else that's one level of it that is kind of uh, of course understandable and acceptable but the other is this kind of further solidification institutionalization i mean there are different questions there but i but i feel that maybe the most urgent uh one is is how to create some ethical framework within a teaching yeah, yeah. that keeps it in common mm -hmm. use, but also makes it something that people themselves can do that doesn't need exactly. an expert. Yeah. I was curious within your community, uh, given what I've heard, how if there's conversation there on this and how, how do yeah, you think? There's conversation all the time. For example, Tom, always tell, like friend of mine came here from Vancouver. And uh, so he had some, uh, so he asked Tom that I want you to come to Vancouver to do our class. He said, no, you learn yourself and then go teach others. Our idea is that everybody should be able to do it. So this conversation happens all the time, you know. And, and um, you know, the pressure is always on in the sense of to commercialize things. And, uh, and the pressure is here too for this, you know, because you're right, what is the replication of the system, it's a replication in everything. It replicates itself. And there's no space given to anybody else. That's the hardest thing is that, and also your own brain is um, geared that way as well. If you're not thinking out of that box, the, the, you know, the, the concentration is how do you make it successful? How do you take it to the next stage? What right. are you going I, to do financially? I mean, you know? I don't want to interrupt you, Ardi, but I mean, I was just thinking, for instance, I mean, just from my kind of an, totally another angle, you know, I could say, well, possibly the efficacy of this whole thing is maybe most 
tied to or as tied to this phenomena as all that you've described that let's say if if we approach it from this kind of idea that there are different kinds of relations in in the human history you know mm -hmm. that is one is like hierarchy one is more exchange based and one is let's say love or communism and these we're always intertwined or entangled in these different levels yeah. of relating to things. Maybe the, the, the efficacy uh, of this or affection uh, of this is precisely because it's, it's uh, less entangled with this hierarchy and exchange yeah. mm -hmm. and the, the vibration is allowed to, to go yeah. because it's, it's on this kind of uh, non-countable Mm -hmm. level where there's no money exchange and the more it goes into hierarchy and exchange it will lose its af uh, affection because now it becomes uh complicated by other other kinds of layers of preventing the healing process and the curing yeah. process so it's like well i think that's where tom really gets nervous i mean you need money that's fine but he does not let it connect with his healing like he doesn't want something from someone. And, and it's again the same reason that he feels that if you connect money to it, he'll lose, it'll be lost. That, you, that effect will be lost. So you don't want, you know, in other words, you don't want to direct your brain towards now making money. Because the minute you do that, that's a different stage. That's a different way of going. And that is the reason why he didn't sell his um, uh, machines to Google because he felt like it, this is not about a machine. Machine is only connected with our collective. If it doesn't have, you know, if it goes to Google as a single machine, it, the effect will be very different from when it's um, with the collective uh, that has come into being. And what is the collective? Collective is people. It's the collective is the strength and the, uh, of the of this mind that is connecting mm. with each other is what the collect the strength is and and the philosophy of this is bound by that in the sense that the healing is getting stronger as our collective is getting bigger mm. it's not the it's this is not an individual healing we don't have individual like i don't you know i can use some of my effect as a human being but it's not it's our collective strength that exists in the universe. And as, the, I mean, that's one thing wonderfully uh, Tom mentions is that as that grows, this healing will grow, not only uh, physically size wise, but in depth, that it'll get stronger in its healing. It's getting faster in its healing. It takes much less time for us now to heal than even five years ago. Mm. That, I mean, that's the kind of strength we're seeing. So it's a, it, uh, you know, you, you're absolutely right, you know, how uh, to build this new space in which, um, you know, love and I, I can only use the word love and energy is directed towards each other and, and this earth. We have to love this earth. It, it's our habitat. And, and, and it's not, you can't rape it and think, we're going to be okay. So I, it, I think this is, you know, this healing is really still has that feeling of it's co connected to that, that, you know, um, the love of the, the, the body and the universe and um, all things that are required for us. Uh, it has to be uh, a complete, it's a complete way of being. And um, and I think that is what drew me to, um, to this, uh, just so that, you know, it's uh, a space where you can really think out mm -hmm. of the box, rethink, and, um, and, and, and when you, you know, when you volunteer in this way, you also volunteer your money, meaning you want it to continue and we know financially you can't it's not in thin air it's you have you you volunteer yourself your being your whatever you have you say okay this is you know we want this to survive 
And I found that that is what um, people who get healed do. They want to make sure that the place stays for others and themselves. So, you know, the volunteering of um, finances is there. So it's, it, is a new, it is a new way, you know, because we, we live in the old, we can't, we can't shun, you know, every, every little thing you do out there is financed, you know, it's a financial. So we, you know, but I think it's, we're doing it a different way is that we're doing on whatever's required, we do it. Uh, I, there, there's people who have healed are so loving in this direction also that they want this place to be continue. And, um, and yes, of course, we're finding other ways, like we're trying to connect, you know, like the, the, the people that are doing this professionally in, 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 the, um, in the space, they are uh, like we're trying to get insurances you know like you, acupuncture you can get insurance money we try all that is happening as well so you know you you're finding different ways but it's not connected in the same way of that you want it to be, become this professional um the hospital or you know a clinic or that's the only thing you're thinking of i think that is where you're right that how what is your philosophy and your theory and how does that connect to uh, you know to human beings and to a system what kind of system are you building and up to now it's not it's not going financial in that way it's not trying to be a capital uh, framework to to but it's hard it's very difficult it's so easy to go that way because it is a success but it's um, but uh, you know, Tom, I think isn't he's um, doesn't think in that that light, which is it's very good. Uh, what what uh, completely the other question? What if somebody doesn't heal? Some people somebody, don't heal. Yes, and then who's who's to blame? Nobody. You make a promise that this method is very effective, and so for me, it can create also like uh, the question of guilt, somebody doesn't heal, so... If you've decided you're not going, this is not going to heal, it won't heal you. Because it is a relationship. But yeah, once the relationship is opened, I, we are, I, I, we've not had any, anyone who doesn't heal. I mean, like if your cancer is so far gone, I've had friends die, like who had so much radiation that we could only help him to live for a year. And he died. But the radiation was, he had so much radiation that we couldn't change that. But what we could, what we were able to do was give him, give him one more year. But we, that, that, there was that conversation that took place. So it does happen that, you know, you, everybody does not survive. And, 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 and at the end of the day, we're all going to die. I'm just saying, I find this concept problematic mm -hmm. because you say, oh, this is, their, this is their fault because they don't want to heal. And this is not correct, I find. No, but the, there's, um, I mean, we, we get like, uh, somebody will introduce us to someone and uh, they'll come one time and, um, and then they say, we, I'm not coming back. We say, that's fine, don't come. Yeah. So it's, you know, there's, there's blockages in even, um, you know, in, in, in sort of systems because you, you, you can easily block. You don't have to open this, um, you know, this togetherness, this space that you're trying to open. And some people cannot, don't want to do it. But there are many, many path, pathways. Yeah, they could do, a, there's no problem. I mean, it's not, it's not a case of blame. It is a case of saying, okay, you know, there's other possibilities. You can do that. It felt to me, um, it's not a question of uh, blame or judgment about uh, um, not, not entering into a healing process. But it, what sounds to me, maybe, one of the one of the strongest things that i i feel about this uh, this approach 
is that um, the importance of entering the relationship itself as a way of, uh, uh, in a way, getting entangled. And uh, this entering the relationship, uh, it is what sustains not only the a shared belief, but it's also what sustains uh, um, the, the possibility of uh, creating a certain perceptual world and, mm -hmm. and so for making sense. So the question is not as much uh, to heal or not to heal, but yeah. entering or not within a relationship. Yes. Yeah. And, and, uh, and to enter a relationship, it is challenging. And that's maybe um, just as a side note, but it, there is a lot that I would love to develop more uh, in, uh, in dialogue with you. Um, entering a relationship which is not monetarized means mm -hmm. also to sustain a relation. Because, you know, even when you hear, I mean, just a, 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 like a joke in psychoanalysis, you know, or they, they say that the, the, actually the money uh, pays the session because it's also what frees you from the uh, engagement or the commitment yes. Yes. in yeah. the relationship. Yeah. And, that's, and so there is almost a kind of asymmetry uh, yeah. which is mediated by the money so that uh, you are in a way discharged from the responsibility. I mean, you as a patient but also maybe uh, you as a therapist, uh, so that it doesn't get... Uh, um, entangled. Yeah, entangled. And I think yeah. that the whole question, uh, I mean, it's very interesting for me because we are so used to, we, we come so much from a, a centuries of modern individual fictions uh, that we are... Uh, we have been uh, uh, taught that we are, that to think the other way around, uh, it's really like a big commitment. It's like a jump and then we use the word belief to mm. say, okay, it's a system of belief. It's a, but I think that there is a power in the entanglement. Uh, and I think yeah. it's also where the, the notion of uh, money exchange comes in uh, in order exactly to disempower, but also to disempower because of the fear of the entanglement and the power of, and the power of it. Yes, See, yes. Another aspect, just that this healing works much faster on animals because they don't have prejudices. Yeah, very fast. Very yeah. fast on, you know, animals. It's a, a but I, oh. I like what you, um, you know, you put forward that it's the, the re the relationship of the entanglement. And um, I mean, I have not had any difficulty, I could tell you the truth with anyone, um, that I've, once we've connected, it's the entanglement is always very strong. And, um, and nobody uh, has left it in that way, except, uh, you know, this young woman, she, you know, got, just got afraid and she just needed to get away for a while. And you have to accept that too, that, you know, it, that fear can be there. And then she came back, you know, uh, three weeks later to say, I'm, I'm feeling so much better. So, you know, that I think happens, that kind of, um, but, uh, uh, but there is, uh, there's some people reject totally that they want nothing to do with it. That we do get that. Like we'll talk to some people and they say, no, I want nothing to do with that. And that's where you say, yes, that's okay. That is a choice you make, you know? So you, you might have had the conversation or their relative or friend had the conversation and they said, no, we don't want to, that's not for us. So then you, that's, it's okay. I think the acceptance is okay. It's just, it's hard to see, you know, that, that they might've been healed but now they're going to, they're, they're on their deathbed. Yeah, maybe already uh, undoing this kind of separatedness in terms of me and a complete stranger, that we are already in a relation. We just don't know it. Yep. And, then it's and an interrelation, let's say, or a trans, uh, you know, like this idea of the unconscious being earth, the unconscious being the world. Mm. No, I mean, even in Nietzsche, you have this kind of will 
to power, but it's not an individual will. It's like, it's, it's, the earth, it's earth, you know? And, and as such, for me, that's why I find it amazing today, because I don't separate one practice from another exactly. by a wall. In a way, it's more, each one of them, it's, not, a it's space. more like a mode of thinking and mode of experiencing and feeling and understanding because it's very complex we cannot just put it on on one practice through okay. one experience yeah. it's more we are open to to let it enter our experience and see what happens so i don't see like oh now i know a magic trick and i'm going to tell everybody yeah. get the magic trick i'm i know that more it's a willing to go on the journey as mm -hmm. somebody said yeah. chinsia was saying yeah. it is more that whether we have a so-called sickness or no sickness because at the end what we learned from you mari is that it is and from you hardy today as well you, you know it's a blockage and from you also thomas and carla and everybody in who is in this kind of practices that are so important but not an isolated one or the other it's and and this and that so mm -hmm. and more that we will yeah. we're really grateful thank you so much oh, we feel very wonderful wonderful to yeah. share this yeah, yeah. Uh, i always uh, i yeah. always like martin buber's phrase openness to otherness Absolutely. That's very important. Awesome. Yes, yeah. I, I hope we can marry and uh, Carl and Thomas and Cinzia and Emilio, we can continue this because I feel there is a need, curiosity, energy around very, this. Very important. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. If nothing else, this is the way to maintain our sanity in this time. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.